Hey guys, welcome back to Summer Bakes Throw Up. I just quickly want to show you what to do with that almond pulp. You've just made almond milk. I've actually just made almond milk and I have all this pulp left over. What do you do with it? You can throw it away. I have thrown mine away before, at least in the beginning when I first started this because I didn't know what to do with the almond pulp. But here's a simple, quick way to use it. You don't want to waste, right? Waste not, what not? You can use it for so many things. So once you strain your almond pulp, just pour it out onto a cookie sheet with a silt pat. Actually, silt pats are pretty important for this process. I've used foil a couple times and my pulp stuck to the foil. So foil is not a good option here. So you could do parchment paper, that would work. Parchment paper or silt pat, just spread out your pulp using a spatula to where it's just sort of a nice thin layer on your cookie sheet silt pat here. And then, Set your oven to 175 degrees. Yes, 175, so it's on the low end. It's probably about the lowest your oven will go or close to it. And then you're gonna sit this in the oven for four hours. Your pulp will dry out, it will toast, and it will be a great accompaniment for all sorts of things. Four hours later and our almond pulp has been dried out and toasted. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. It really is sticking to the silk hat. But if you just take a spoon or a fork or a knife and you just scrape it a little bit along the sill pat, it will come right up. And you're gonna have some chunks, but that's okay. You can just squeeze them and they fall apart. Notice how fine these chunks are. So what I do next is I already have some almond pulp in my freezer that's been dried out. So all I'm gonna do is add what I have here to this bag and put it back in the freezer. And it's okay if you leave chunks, because usually what I do after I put it all in there, I just break it up. So this is like really super easy and quick to do this. Your almond pulp is ready to go. What can you do with this almond pulp? So with it dried out, my favorite things are to use it in place of some of the oats in an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. So you could replace maybe a quarter of a cup with the nuts. You could add this to your pancake batter. You could put this in muffins. You can add them to pretty much any cookie that you want. You can also add this to pie crusts or pizza crust. And let me tell you, there is nutritional value in the nuts and it's so finely chopped you don't even taste it or notice it. So what you're getting, you're getting fiber, you're getting some vitamin E, and you're getting other nutrients that are still left in the nuts. And you don't, I don't eat nuts and things other than by themselves. With the almonds here, you don't even notice it. So if you're not a nut fan, you'll never notice it. Like I will not eat oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with nuts in it, but I will eat if there's some of this replacing the oats because you can't tell it. So then when you put them in the bag, you just seal it up. You can break it up. You stick this in the freezer and this will last in the freezer for months. So you can make this anytime you want. I always have a bag going in my freezer and I do use them on a weekly basis. So some of the things we like to do with them is use them as a topping on oats for breakfast. So you can put them on cereal, great for a topping of salad. This makes a great binder for burgers. Yeah, so if you're gluten-free and you can't have bread or floured items, if you're making a hamburger or a veggie burger, instead of using some kind of a breadcrumb, use almond meal instead. One of my other favorite things to do with this is to make crackers. So you mix this with a little bit of oil, some dried herbs, salt, whatever your favorite flavorings are, and then you make just a really thick batter, roll that out flat to where it's really, really thin, on a cookie sheet and then score them with a knife, prick them and bake them at 350 for about 15 minutes and you have a wonderful homemade cracker. Great thing, you can also add some nutritional yeast to it to give it a cheesy flavor, perfect. So if you wanted to not dry this out, if you wanted to use the pulp as it's still wet, there are two great ideas I have for that. You can make a great almond spread. Just mix the wet almond pulp with some olive oil or any kind of oil you like some fresh herbs, garlic, and some salt. Pulse it up in a food processor and you've got a great spread for your crackers or veggies or whatever. Another one is face mask. Ah, uh, yes. Use your fresh almond pulp that's still wet. Mix it with some either almond oil or some olive oil. You could add some essential oils to it, make a little paste out of it, and use it as a face mask. My favorite way to use my almond pulp is in homemade bread. Of course, I'm a baker. That's what I'm gonna use it for. So this is homemade bread I actually made this week for Scott because I can't eat bread, right? So this is just a slice of white bread. It looks like it's wheat bread, but it's not. You can see all the little almond pulp pieces in here. And the reason why it's a little dark because I use barley malt extract as my sweetener in this bread because I bought it for the Borodinsky Russian rye bread I made and I need to use up the, the barley malt, so I used it in this bread. But look how nice and fluffy it is. So this is about a half a cup of almond pulp that's dried with three cups of flour. And notice how great sandwich bread it turned out to be. Well, that's it for today.
Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. Please subscribe to my channel, share my videos with your family and friends. And if you have other ideas on how to use almond pulp, just leave me a comment in the description down below. Until next time, go make the world.